We have been talking about the ideal gas law and its many uses for many videos, but we don't know what an ideal gas is yet. So in this video, I'll explain to you the difference between an ideal gas and a non-ideal gas. So we're going to talk about ideal behavior. So ideal fixes ideal first non-ideal. Now, there are two conditions in which a gas will behave most ideally. These are temperature and pressure. So you can recall the ideal gas law PV equals RT. So these two factors are what make an, a, a gas ideal or non-ideal. Now, as you may think, well, it could be high temperature, low temperature, high pressure, or low pressure. But there's only one combination in which a gas can, can, be, called, can be called ideal. And that is when the temperature is high and the pressure is low. So, an ideal gas has high temperature and low pressure. Now, we know when a gas is ideal, but when a gas becomes non-ideal, something something will something different will happen. So, let's just make a picture of an ideal gas first. We have our container here. And let's say it's covered. The te we have a temperature here of, um, I don't know, uh, 40 degrees Celsius. It, it doesn't really matter. Let's just say this is high. high. And a very low pressure. Just very low. When we were talking about gases, we said that the gases occupied the whole container, so they they occupy the, the whole volume of it, and they 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 move, so they're in constant motion. They'll 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 be crashing into a container, and then keep keep coming back. So they 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 move everywhere. They're everywhere. So that's an an, an ideal gas. There no, nothing will change it. it they will crash in, into the walls and then just keep moving. But now let let's picture a non-ideal gas. We have the same container, but this time the temperature is low and the pressure is is high. So we have our gases here, just doing what they do, but this time we have to account. To, to take into into account intermolecular forces. So you're not supposed to know what intermolecular forces are yet, but I'll be talking about them in following videos. For now, all you have to know is that this this collisions when the gas crashes into into the wall will be lower and sometimes two gases because of their intermolecular forces will, will stick together and the, the behavior is considered non-ideal non they will not be just moving around everywhere like and just crashing into everything this time they will stick because of the intermolecular forces so when we have a non-ideal gas we have to take into account intermolecular forces too and there's something else that we haven't talked about and that is our molecular volume. So we said that the pressure is really high. So our container will be really, really pressured. So there's so it is said that the gas volume approaches zero. 
so zero. But you have to think that each molecule of gas, although in very very high pressure, has has its volume. There's you cannot just assume that that the volume will be zero. You have to take into account now the molecular volume or the volume of each molecule. So instead of of just thinking like in the ideal uh, in an ideal gas, just there's two factors: the temperature and the pressure. In a non-ideal gas, we have to take account into account the temperature, the pressure. And the the intermolecular forces and the molecular volume. So that's really the difference between an, an ideal and a non-ideal gas. And well, there's one more thing, but I will explain it in another video. I'll attach the link. And it's that in a non-ideal gas, as it, as its name says, you cannot use the the ideal gas law. So I'll be talking about the Van der Waals equation in the following video.